Good morning. I want to welcome you back to Moments of Essencology. I am your host facilitator, Dr. Derek A. Reeves, and we thank you again for following us and we thank you for tuning in. And I don't want to waste too much time. I want to get right into this segment. I have a lot to talk about today. Remember, Essencology is the study of the essential essence of man. And so as such, it treats man as a trichotomic person and not simply just the hardwiring of the brain, the electrical energy and the chemical processes that occur in the brain. One of the reasons I found it necessary to begin to understand man as a living thinking soul is that when we reduce him to an evolutionary phenomenon, we have a tendency to have no absolute value for life. And this is why even when it comes to our ethical response to life, to babies being born and children, our ethics seem to slide because of how we define life. Um, in some nations and some countries, life is defined or a person is defined as being born when they come out of the womb. And so in many different occasions, how they defined person, infants, babies, even people, if it is in accordance to the evolutionary process, then the foundation of the meaning of personhood shifts from culture to culture. So today I want to talk about what it means to be a person from an essencological point of view. Again, there are differences in psychology and essencology in that psychology deals with the study of, even though this is a misnomer, the study of the soul. And in many cases, it is reduced to the study of the mind. What we call the mind in the psychological world is that it is the process of chemical um, energy and the connection of the brain, the nervous systems, the central nervous system, the brain, the brain stem, and then we come to the peripheral nervous systems, which are those nerve endings that flow from the brain, that flow from the spinal cord and so forth and throughout the entire body. But when we look at scripture, scripture in Hebrews 1 and 3 speaks about person. And the scripture specifically in reference to Christ says he is the, he is the image of the very person of God. And when we look up this term person, in the Greek, the Koine Greek, the term person is taken from the Greek term hypostasis, and according to the syntax or according to the type of Greek or the region of Greek you speak, many call it hypostasis. Hypostasis, 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 or hypostasis. And so when we look at this term, it is a phenomenon then that indicates that there is, first of all, the word hupo, something that is an undergirding, something that allows everything within the object in which we are speaking to stand or to exist. And so the hupostasis then is the very foundational elements of existence of a specific thing. When we talk about then what is personage, we're talking about two different types of things. First of all, personage is the total conglomeration of all that a person is. And so in reference to the human species, we could say hypostasis is body, soul, and spirit. Again, there are scientific um, studies and scientific branches of field of topics that do not recognize the soul. Neurosurgery, uh, neuroscience is one, psychology is one, psychoanalytic field is another. 
There are very few people who deal with the soul as a living soul. And so, ergo, essencology. Now, first of all, the philosophy of recognizing man to be a living soul indicates them that he is more than just his physiological components. This also indicates then that there is a different unique value that goes beyond the physiology of man. Therefore, when we observe him as a living soul, we can understand that he is more than just his appearance, he is more than just his racial construct, he is more than just, again, the physiological apparition that we see. We have a tendency of judging individuals based upon what we call the evolutionary uh, ascendancy, the evolutionary scope of their worth. How far are they evolved? We sometimes will begin to um, determine this by the shape of the skull, the size of the skull, or the color of the skin, how much melatonin they have within their physiology, where they were raised, what was the descendancy of the parentage. And so we place limited value on those whom we deem to be less evolved. We know eugenics and racial science was a product of this view that stated that through the evolutionary process, there were some races that did not quite evolve as extensively. And so it has a racial pecking order. And so the personage of the individual or his hypostasis is determined by his evolutionary ascent. Therefore, it was considered that some individuals were not fully human because they had not fully evolved into the status or the state that others did. When we look at the scripture, the scripture speaks to us in giving us a field that is level for all mankind. It states that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Then when we get down to Genesis 1 and 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. We go over to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, I believe. He says, and God formed man out of the dust of the ground. He breathed into him, into his nostrils, the breath of life, the kahi nefesh, or the kahi neshama, the blast of living wind that produced a living soul. A living soul, then, means that an individual is, first of all, initiated, brought into being by something that causes it to be animated, to have biological function, and to have continued existence. And so the living soul then is literally the person or the individual. The soul is composed of individuality. The soul is composed of consciousness, awareness. The soul is composed of an atmosphere, a living atmosphere in which the living personage is connected inside the body and operates through the body to gain access to the physical realm and to gain access to the spiritual realm. And so the soul is the polar, it is the uh, stasis, the being of stasis connected to the external world of the material, the internal dimensions of the spiritual. And therefore, man or the soul or the person is multidimensional. If we were to understand what makes us unique, what makes us a person, we'd have to say the soul. Each soul then was incorporated within a unique physiology. And according to the very nerve endings, according to the cells of the brain, the neural pathways, all of the glia cells, all of those unique cells, and I don't want to go into that right now, but all of those unique cells then 
they had their own genetic structure, they had their own structure, and they had their own characteristic, because each individual is unique. Each body is unique, although there are similar uh, constructions of the physiology, the same systems, each one has a unique personal signature. And so the person that comes into the physiology, that physiology has been developed and formed by the will of God to produce an individual person. That individual person has unique feelings, a unique volitional capacity, a unique cognitive capacity. And so when we look at personhood as being the living soul and not, again, just the physiological mechanisms of hard wiring, the nerve endings, the chemicals, the electricity, we can now begin to consider the worth of man. If man is literally a living being, then man has thought, man has purpose, man has objectivity, and man has so much more that he is capable of doing, and man is so much more than the perception of the externalized physiology and the racial component. And therefore, from an absolute statement, an absolute view, we must view man as having a unique purpose, a unique destiny, and a unique design. And therefore, Essencology sees personhood as a living soul, a thinking, sentient, cognitive, volitionally driven person who is valuable in every scheme of the way, unique within his own personality, temperament, and unique within his own construct. And so it is we come to understand that all persons are different, and all persons have value, and all persons have something that they can bring to the table when considered to be more than machinery. Again, I am your host, Dr. Derek A. Reeves. We thank you for being with us in this segment, Defining Moments of Essencology. Hope you will join us again. And until next time, God is still reigning. Jesus is Lord, and Jesus is coming back again. Have an excellent day. God bless.